Many Christian communities around the world will come together this Sunday to celebrate and commemorate those who work on the sea. In many parts of the world, the second Sunday in July is referred to as Sea Sunday. The initiative began in England back in 1975. It asked the faithful to remember seafarers, their families, and to pray for their safety doing dangerous but very vital work. Joining us now from Rome is Father Bruno Cesari, director of Stella Maris International. Father Bruno, thank you for joining us today. Um, if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit more about this Sea Sunday, why it began, and what celebrations will be taking place this year? Yes, in the civil society, there are different celebrations for the seafarers, but this Sea Sunday is more related to Christian denomination, and it started uh, uh, in the early 70s, when uh, the different Christian denominations, they decided to get together and say, we have to have one day to celebrate and to pray for the seafarers, for the work that they are doing, because uh, they are hard work and they are sacrifice. They are uh, making our life more easy and comfortable. There will be different celebrations uh, in different ports, in different uh, centers around the world. It's been uh, already a tradition that is uh, very well established. And so all around the world, uh, there will be this uh, celebration in the churches. It will be, there will be prayer, there will be messes offered for uh, the seafarers and their families. And, Father, for those who, who may not be familiar, would you mind telling us about, you know, what life is like for those who earn a living on ships at sea and what it's like right now? As I was saying, it's a very difficult life and a life full of sacrifices. First of all, they have to live far from their family because the contract is between 9 to 12 months. But uh, during the pandemic, uh, some of them they had to extend the contract up to 18 or 24 months. So these uh, people, they cannot be with their family, with their children, when there are particular occasions, such as uh, First Communion, graduation, also when there are difficult times, for example, when the children, uh, they get sick, or also when within uh, the family and the relatives, there is a, a death. He cannot be there to mourn with their family and other things. So they live far from uh, their loved ones. Uh, Father, before I let you go quickly, can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects that your organization is working on right now? Yes, uh, of course, the pandemic has changed drastically our uh, way of doing the ministry because we used to go on the port, we used to go on board of the ship, and so. Um, with uh, the restriction uh, caused by the pandemic, this cannot be done anymore or is done with uh, a lot of difficulties. So we are trying to adapt uh, our services for them, and so we are using much more the mass media. Uh, another project that we are doing is the training of our chaplain. We have already done three pilot projects, uh, one in Europe, one in uh, the Indian Ocean, and uh, at the beginning of September, we will have it in the Philippines. And after these three pilot projects, we are planning to roll out the formation training for all the chaplains of Stella Maris around the world. Uh, another project that uh, we want to realize, because uh, in, 2020, in 2020, we were supposed to celebrate the centennial of the foundation of Stella Maris in Glasgow, but because of the pandemic, uh, we were forced to cancel. Now we might be able to have a small celebration this year and to uh, celebrate together what uh, Stella Maris has achieved until now in this uh, more 100 years of services. Well, Father, thank you so much for speaking with us today. We appreciate it. Father Bruno Cesari, Director of Stella Maris International. Thank you again, Father.